What's up everybody? AC Professor here and today we're going to talk about contactors. In today's work we're going to divide in three sections. The first section is going to talk about how it works and about the different types. The second part how to diagnose and troubleshoot and the third part we're going to show how to replace it. So in the first part we're going to talk about uh, how the contactor works. For example, if you have a breaker panel with uh, all the different breakers and uh, 240 volts is coming from the breaker panel going to the AC, the outside unit. Every time the unit is connected to the breaker panel, it keeps running and keeps cooling. And every time your wife says, Why is it so cold in here? You have to go outside and shut it off. And it's going to get hot again, so you have to go and kick it back in. So we add a contactor that goes in between, and the thermostat send a signal to turn it on and off uh, on the two sides each side connects it's coming juice from the breaker panel and the other side is the load or in this case is the outside unit the condenser thermostat sends signal to the contactor to on and off so from here you get one wire coming to one side to one side and the other one coming to the other side. So whenever the thermostat calls for cooling, the contactor engages and clicks. Uh, a little magnet on the bottom, engage, and pulls that jumper over so that the juice flows to one side to the other one. Continues over to the condenser. So how to choose the correct contactor? The main difference in between all of them is going to be the connector types. Pretty much what kind of connector have on the site. And you have to choose the correct one to match your system. For example, in this case, we have a connector on a site on the top one is to accept wires that have something like lugs. In that particular type, we have something that uh, you accept any kind of wire that's just bare wire. So you can uh, unscrew it, open it, and tighten it up. All of them on the side, they have the connectors for the quick one quarter connector that you can just connect and pull. What's the difference between that particular and that one? And why the, for the last five years, the manufacturer are using a lot of those instead of the old-fashioned ones. Uh, the difference is pretty much one of the legs is connected all the time and only one it's open. And why the manufacturers are making this one? It's just because this one is easy and cheaper to make. So saving cost. It's all the units that's made in the last five years, usually you're going to find something like that in your system. And you're welcome to replace it with a unit like that. And that particular unit is just pretty much used for three phases. So you got one, two, and three phases coming from the breaker panel. Can use a three phase to substitute a dual contactor. In this section, we're going to talk about how to troubleshoot and diagnose a contactor. You always want to use a, a voltmeter that can check uh, AC voltage. All the volt measurements in the AC is going to be volts AC. DC it's for the car. We don't want DC, we want an AC voltage. And then we're going to measure voltage somewhere around 240 volts. We're looking for around 240 volts. So you want to put your tool uh, in a, a high range like 500 or 700 range or if you have an automatic selector like that one. First thing you want to check is the voltage coming from the breaker panel to the contactor. And you want to measure the voltage across the terminals 
both terminals and we're looking for 240 volts. I'm going to show the same diagnosis on unit in a bit, but just in theory, we want to look 240 volts across the terminal. You don't want to check one side to the chassis, to the terminal, to the ground. You need 240 volts across. If you have a 240 volts present, that means the breaker supply voltage is good. If no voltage is present, we want to find the problem. You got the problem maybe in a disconnect of the wall or the breaker pan. Check it there. Your problem is, is not in the unit. It's somewhere before that. If you have a 240 volts present, you want to check the load side for 240 volts. If you got a 240 volts present, that means the signal from the thermostat is coming in and the unit is closed and it's providing voltage to the compressor and the fan. So units have to be operational. If no 240 volts is present on a load side, you want to check signal from the thermostat and you, you want to check it on the two sides terminals. And we're looking for around 24 volts or above. If 24 volts is not present, that means either the wire that's coming from the thermostat or the thermostat itself is defective. You always you want to make sure the wire connectors, uh, the terminals are kind of snug. If they're not, if you kind of pull it and it comes out, you want to put some tension. Use a uh, little pliers and just crimp it a little bit, making sure it's tight. So whatever you apply it, you can hold and pull it, it does not come out. Uh, right now we're outside on a condenser unit and we can see the contactor right at the bottom. Just to refresh, for the contactor to work, we need uh, two things. First, you need the uh, high voltage that's coming out from your uh, breaker panel, the wall, just making sure you get voltage there and it's coming to the wire and if you follow the wire you can see that pretty much entering right over here and that's pretty much the line side and on the top of it is the load side and in your case it can be the opposite way the wire can come from somewhere else so just follow the wire and making sure which side is the line and which one is the load the first check we're going to do is the line voltage putting selecting volt ac and we're checking the bottom two terminals and looking for 240 volts if no voltage is present here that's mean the problem is somewhere before the system either the breaker disconnect or the breaker panel it's not providing the correct voltage we have to do the check there first. The second test we're going to do is a signal from the thermostat. You want to do in the side terminals. Uh, so the line voltage coming here, the load is coming there. In our case, we want to check the voltage coming to the two terminals. We're looking for 24 volts and higher. Usually it's going to be around 25, 27 volts. Something else to uh, bear in mind that if you have a the fan actually working, uh, you can hear the compressor working, that means the contactor is engaged and the signal from the thermostat is coming in. If you can just hear it, that's the thermostat send a low voltage signal for the contactor to kick in. We can hear buzzing, pretty much like a humming noise. So this way we know the contact is engaged. Uh, we can check the voltage just to make sure, but if that noise is present, that means voltage is there. So we're looking for 24 volts and high, volts AC is what we check. And we're looking in the side terminals. So we got a 26 volt present. That's mean good voltage is coming in. Contact is engaged. As you can see in our application, we have a connector type with the two lugs. So uh, uh, we cannot use that particular case. We have to use the one that can take the wire and that it tight on top. Bear in mind whenever you order one to order the correct one. If voltage is present at the line side, the low voltage, 24 volts is present, that's mean we're supposed to have voltage at the load side and we're looking for 240 volts. If 240 volts is not present, that's mean the contact is defective and need to be replaced. 
when uh, replacing the contactor you want to make sure both the line voltage for the breaker disconnect is not coming in and then the thermostat is off so no voltage is coming to the sides you want to pay attention to the top side uh, there's always going to be two different covers it doesn't matter what kind of covers as long as when you put them together to put them the same uh, black and black and red and red you can put them either side as long as they're both on the same side so red on that side and black on that or black on that and red on that side that's uh, also for the bottom one it doesn't matter which side is coming the white and the black you can put them either way it still be fine same thing goes for the thermostat wires you can put the orange on the other side and the green here you'll be just fine before replacing the contactor you always want to discharge the capacitor or leave it for like a uh, five ten minutes to discharge itself so you want to start on the load side and if you just use a uh, regular pliers you just pull each water up Then we're going to take the thermostat wires that's on the side. And then we're going to screw the bottom lugs. So to remove the, the bottom lugs, you can do a setup of uh, using flathead screwdriver and with the little adjustable wrench that you can actually put more torque to it. You just torque it and you get it loose. And you get it. And uh, you can just use the pliers to pull them out. The last thing we're going to do is uh, unscrew the two uh, screws on the side, usually uh, two in a diagonal position. And we're going to use the little extension to get, uh, get them faster. And the unit is out. First thing we do is uh, we bolt the two side bolts. Then we out the line voltage. And if you use a pair of pliers, nose pliers, it's going to be a lot easier to put it back on. torque it to 20 pounds after that you want to put thermostat wires on you want to make sure each connection is uh, tight if it's not tight just uh, crimp it a little bit uh, just crimp it a little bit this way you get a tight connection and then we install and Always remember the one side color goes to one side and the other one is to the other side. It doesn't matter which side is which. And start with the back side. Make sure they go all the way in and that's pretty much it. If you like this video, press subscribe and if you so desire, smash it if you want. It's 2019 and that's the new thing and, and I'll see you next video.